I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of country that we gather on today, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. So thank you very much for inviting me to speak about uh, Cancer Council support services. And I would actually just like to uh, dedicate this presentation to Andrew Walker, who was met, met Cancer Council, in fact, met my colleague Kim, who's at the back of the room, in 2017 at this forum. Um, and Andrew became a regular and long-time member of our telephone support group. Sadly, Andrew died last month, <clears throat> but uh, he's in my thoughts today. So just looking at navigating cancer together, uh, at Cancer Council, our strategic focus is improving the lives of people affected by cancer by offering them the right support services at the right time. We help patients, family, carers, friends, and work closely with health professionals who refer people to our services. We provide information and support across every stage of the cancer experience, from diagnosis through treatment, post-treatment, survivorship, and also to end of life. So I'm hoping that some people in the room will know of our 13, 11, 20 information and support service, and that's often the uh, first contact that people have with Cancer Council. This is a free and confidential service that provides evidence-based information and support for health professionals, for the general public, and for people affected by cancer. All 13, 11, 20 staff have cl worked clinically in an oncology environment and are trained as navigators to point people in the right direction for their concerns. So when a patient or a person calls 13, 11, 20, it gives them the opportunity to run through what's happening for them with a health professional. Uh, many of our call, for many of our callers, this means being listened to by being able to tell their story in their own time to un help unpack the issue, provide uh, emotional support to them, helping them write down questions for their treating team and putting uh, in referrals for supportive services. Um, care services to help them along the way. The consultants have a knowledge of both Cancer Council New South Wales services as well as other cancer support organisations. They help break down complex medical terms into layman terms but do not provide medical advice and I always encourage them to speak with their treating team. We help equip patients and their carers with information to have informed discussions with their healthcare professionals so they can decide on the best course of action in a collaborative manner. And uh, in the past year, we received over 10,000 calls uh, and one in five people are referred to a Cancer Council service. So what are these services? So looking at practical support, we know a cancer diagnosis can be both an emotional roller coaster as well as a logistical challenge. People affected by cancer are often not only have the emotional stress and worry about treatment, but also the challenges of getting to and from treatment. Uh, we offer practical support services that includes transport to treatment in regional areas, accommodation support for people who need to travel over 100 kilometres for their treatment and, and also their family members, we have information stands uh, in many hospitals around the state and they are um, manned by volunteers uh, who are there to provide written information to help people find more, uh, more about services in their own community. We have uh, cancer liaison health professionals in four hospitals across New South Wales at the moment. We have survivorship programs um, and particularly one that some may know is our Enriching Survivorship Program, which introduces survivors to a range of nutritional information, involvement in physical activity, and we've heard today from a number of people the importance of exercise, uh, practical information and discussion about adjusting to life following cancer treatment. And we also have our webinar program, and these are free uh, seminars uh, that are available on the web through the Cancer Council website, uh, for cancer survivors. And uh, these webinars are always, re always recorded, so if people do register, they will, if they don't, are not available on the at the time of the webinar to attend, the link will be sent to them afterwards. And some of the topics that have run over the years, and we've had over 40 webinars thus far, are returning to work, looking at financial and legal issues, fear of recurrence, fertility issues, sex and sexuality, 
and exercise. And in fact, the next webinar coming up on the 17th of June does focus on uh, exercise and cancer. So legal and financial services, and I know Marina touched upon this in her presentation. Um, this uh, particular program or these services are designed to help and alleviate acute financial hardship. We have a pro bono service which connects people who otherwise can't afford to pay with qualified professionals for free. A financial counsellor will advocate on the client's behalf about their debts such as credit card bills. Financial assistance is a one-off support of $350 to go towards a utility bill or can be sent out as grocery, petrol or taxi vouchers. We have lawyers who assist our clients to create a will, a power of attorney, an enduring guardianship if they are otherwise unable to afford it. A financial planner can help people manage their assets such as mortgage during a change in circumstances which a diagnosis of cancer can certainly bring about. We have workplace advisors who can help in preparing people to return to work. They can work with them about creating their CV. They can also uh, talk to them about um, becoming more confident in their interviewing skills or how to have conversations with their employees, uh, employees about their cancer. And we have, can also provide small business support which can help manage a business with advice. Information resources, and uh, we had the table um, out the, in the foyer out there which had just a very small range of our information resources, uh, but we, have a, we do have a very large range and they are all available to have a look at on the Cancer Council website. So these um, are evidence-based information in a range of printed and online formats which go through practical topics such as nutrition and exercise for cancer patients, as well as the cancer types and treatment types. Uh, as an example, we've got our Understanding Brain Tumors group, um, booklet, which um, I think this is the only copy we've, we've got left at the end of the day. Oh, terrific, thank you. Yeah. These resources are the core of our evidence-based information for those affected by cancer. Uh, they are written in an easy to understand way and come in a variety of formats. So they are um, in booklet form as I've just shown. Um, they can be accessed um, through e-books. They can be accessed online to read online. We also have online fact sheets which can be downloaded and printed off. Uh, we have CDs and we've had um, two CDs, our relaxation CD and our meditation CD on the table. But we now have um, uh, our, our meditation and relaxation um, podcast so that is available uh, through anywhere that you find podcasts and it's called Finding Calm Through Cancer. And we have um, a, a lot of other online content on our website and it is quite easy to navigate through so I would recommend that you have a look at that. Uh, and also, um, we have, not part of our understanding cancer resources, but we have podcasts, and the third podcast has just been launched this year. Uh, so the, the, the first podcast was The Thing About Cancer, and the next two are The Thing About Advanced Cancer. And these podcasts have really been growing in popularity. It's hosted by, all the podcasts are hosted by Julie McCrossan, who's a former ABC presenter and a cancer survivor herself. And she interviews and speaks with uh, health professionals, other experts working with uh, cancer, as well as people affected by cancer. And they are really terrific. Um, each episode goes for about 20 minutes and they're very easy to download and very easy to listen to. The, of course, the, the benefit is that you can listen to it anywhere, on your computer, on your tablet, on your smartphone, and um, are very, very accessible. And now to emotional support, and that's, I guess, where uh, my passion is, and that's an area that I've been working in the whole time that I've been at Cancer Council. So throughout the cancer continuum, people affected by cancer and their carers can experience a wide array of emotions. So we consider the 13, 11, 20 line an emotional support service as well as an information service. And sometimes that is all the, can the client needs, just to speak to a voice who has warmth, who has empathy and who can provide information on the end of the line. 
And all of our supportive care um, services can be spoken to and referred by our 13, 11, 20 consultants. But we have our Cancer Connect program, and that offers one-on-one -on -one support for cancer patients uh, by, run by trained volunteers. So they are all people who have had a diagnosis of, of cancer themselves, have undergone training, so that they have the skills to talk um, to people who are newly diagnosed. And it provides them with a unique understanding with practical information and an emo emotional support associated with that shared life experience. It is available at diagnosis for people with early cancer. We don't have volunteers who provide support from an advanced cancer perspective. And it's up to four contacts. It's a free service and um, people can refer themselves and then uh, one of our consultants will match that person with a volunteer who best suits the needs that that person uh, is after at that time. The telephone support group program, and that is certainly the program that, that I have been working on for quite a number of years, specifically with the brain tumour group, but I also work with some of our other groups, and we have seven groups, and they are mainly for people who have uh, metastatic cancer or less common or harder to treat cancers. We also have a carers group, and we also have a bereavement group called Life After Loss. That's set up slightly differently, but that does offer a six-week, once-a-week group for people who are bereaved um, from, ca from a cancer, lo cancer loss. So the Telephone Support Group program is one hour on the phone, twice a month. Uh, we have up to eight people in the group, and there's two trained facilitators. And people can access this, take part in this group wherever they are. All we ask is that they're in a quiet place. They can be sitting up in bed, they can be sitting anywhere in their home, they can be sitting in a car, they can be sitting outside, they can be actually be sitting in a more public area as long as it's not too busy and there's that privacy where they can speak openly without the risk of being overheard. And um, it, it, the, tel the telephone group for people living with brain tumours is, is, is especially dear to me and we actually um, had one this week. And it's a group where people come together, so it's for anyone in Australia, so we can have people join from any state or territory. And people come because they have that opportunity to speak to others who understand. And there's a lot of humour in this group, there's a lot of sharing, people talk about uh, all sorts of issues around living with a brain cancer. Sometimes it's to get information, to ask questions about treatment or how people are feeling or dealing with side effects, but often it's just to be able to talk to others who understand what it's like. We also have a very active online community and this offers people currently living with cancer, cancer survivors, families, carers and the wider cancer community the opportunity to connect, share experiences and find information and support in a safe and secure forum. So this is a 24-7 digital support, there are forums, there are blogs, there are support groups and there's that opportunity to ask questions and, and receive information from other people who might be living with the same type of cancer. Uh, the Cancer Support Group Leader Program is another program that Kim and I work on and there's many familiar faces in this forum today because people who work with support groups in New South Wales are able to come and attend Cancer Support Group Leader training and Kim and I have been privileged to work with a few people in this room. Yes, thanks Jerry. <laughs> And we, um, we also maintain a database of New South Wales support groups. There's about 260 groups on it at the moment. And that is also accessed by our 13, 11, 20 staff. So if a caller rings up and is wanting a support group, they can find that information on the database that Kim and I work with. But our main, our main relationship really is with the leaders and we're there to support leaders, to provide training and to provide resources. We also have a counselling, a cancer counselling program. So sometimes people affected by cancer, their families and carers need to talk to a professional counsellor about things that are going on in their lives. This service uh, can be provided either face to face or via the telephone. Uh, the standard cost per session is $100, but however, pizza, uh, people experiencing hardship difficulties um, or financial difficulties can be um, accessed via a financial subsidy. And um, th again, this is a referral process through 13, 11, 20, and people are able to receive up to six counselling sessions. 
And just to finish off, I'm just going to give you a case study of how one person uh, has been helped by a number of our services. So we have um, an example of Julie. Uh, Julie is 36 years old. She's married with two children who are in their teens. And Julie's been diagnosed with an aggressive brain cancer and also is experiencing financial distress. So she's unable to work and uh, has experienced a reduction in income and depletion of savings. She's in arrears on her utility uh, bills. She has multiple credit card debts and she is looking towards end of life and finding some aspects of dealing with that very hard to manage. Both Julie and her husband work full time until her diagnosis and uh, due to her diagnosis, Julie of course can no longer work and her husband has had to reduce his work hours to care for Julie as well as the children. Julie's used up all her leave entitlements and um, has become unemployed. So she was referred to Cancer Council by her social worker and she was re referred to 131120. 